Chris with Life 180, and uh, welcome to uh, Office Hours. We are going to be trying to do this uh, on a fairly regular basis. I always uh, hesitate to commit to doing a weekly thing because of my schedule, but uh, today is going to be awesome. Uh, I've got Matt Seibert uh, on the call with me, and um, I think it's going to be fun because uh, Matt is our new-ish uh, Director of Agent Development here at Life 180, and uh, I thought it would be really fun to bring him on here introduce him, uh, kind of talk about his story about how he found us, uh, why he joined us, ultimately what we're doing, and then get into some agent coaching here in a way because, you know, obviously everybody that watches this channel knows that I'm really, really committed to education and really teaching agents um, how, to, how to show up more powerfully in their business and serve more people and all this stuff. So um, I guess without further ado, um, Matt? Awesome having here. It's your it's your uh, your YouTube channel debut with us, huh? Thanks for having me, Chris. And hopefully, this debut will, will blow it up for sure. I'm gonna, once I get my channel going. I'm excited yeah, to, to be part of the team. Uh, I'm excited for the future, everything that we're working on, we're building here. And I think over the the next few weeks, as we do this on a weekly basis, people will get to learn what we're doing and how awesome mm. everything is that we're actually building here. It's exciting. Love it, man. Yeah, man. So, so if you don't mind, let's, let's start um, with a little bit of your background, um, mm -hmm. a little bit about your story. And I think it needs to start a little bit with your background. That way you can kind of get into like, what had you reach out, or, you know, how did you find us, all that stuff. And then we'll kind of go from there. All right. Well, I'll start 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> I was a manager in the corporate world. I think a lot of people that get into this industry, they get sick of the corporate world and they realize they can get paid a lot more for less work in a sense, you know, not tied to a, a, a cubicle, uh, worked with a pretty big company. And um, like most people get in this industry, you kind of, you know, get in through a friend or a family. Um, somebody said, hey, you should get into this industry. And I thought, hmm, uh, you know, uh, I have nothing to lose. So why not? So I ended up getting my license. And it was with a specific company that had a certain type of structure. But going into this industry was the best, best thing I ever did in my entire life. Um, 10 years ago was the last time I ever worked for anybody. I've been working for myself for the last decade. And I think it's easy. I think a lot of people can start a business and obviously the idea of starting a business in itself, working for yourself, there's just something about it that everybody, I think we all want that freedom. Yep. But if you add, like, especially what we do, if you add to that, actually serving people and being able to help people in your business, it's just, I, to me, at least it's a whole different level. And yep. the people I've been able to help over the last decade is just the amazing feeling. It's like sometimes I wake up, I'm like, hey, I can't believe I do this for a living, actually help people and get paid like this at the same time. Um, so it's been it's been a blessing. And, you know, I, I stayed in one company for about eight, nine years. Uh, that company pretty much after COVID, it dissolved and I had to look for a new home. I, I ended up at another company. Um, and I'm glad I went through this experience because I think a lot of agents, they've only stayed with one company. And what I've learned over the years, companies are really good at kind of keeping you in a bubble and not showing you what's what's out there. And because I was forced, I really got to kind of contrast like different companies, like how they help their agents, what their missions are, their values. And I realized they're they're far, they're far different between, you know. And yeah. you know, in the first company, not to mention any names, it's it was a branch off of a well-known company that you have to kind of pay to join, which I'll tell agents right now, if you have to pay to join a company, there's something up there. There's something that's a red yeah. flag, right? Yep. So I had to pay to join and I stayed there about eight, nine years. And the primary product that we sold was IULs. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew. All I knew is IULs. That's what I learned first. And that's what I ended with. And when that company kind of dissolved, I ended up another company that didn't do IULs, but they primarily focused on like final expense mortgage protection. Yep. So I was like, you know what? I've never done this. Let me try this. And it's just been like, you know, on the journey of experiencing different things within the industry. And, you know, I think towards the end, I realized I want to get back into offering IULs and helping people financially. And, you know, I, I think there's a lot of agents that like helping people with final expense mortgage protection. For sure. me, I just didn't feel like a big passion for it. And so yeah. for me, I, I get that feeling of like gratitude and, and really 
uh, enjoying helping people when I help them financially, when I'm guiding them and, you know, identifying problems so I can actually work and find some solutions for them. And all I knew was IULs. And um, so when I decided to, to get my IUL business up, I was going on YouTube and I came across your YouTube channel. And I thought, <laughs> who is this guy? Think who is this is clown? <laughs> talking about IULs. I've been doing this for a decade. This guy does not know more than me. And I listened to a couple of your videos. And I one of the things I really appreciate about it is you were very specific and detailed. And mm -hmm. you didn't sugarcoat things. You weren't talking in generalization. You're the first person I've seen, as far as IULs go, you actually popped open the hood and say, this is this, this is this, this is this. While everybody talks in generalization hypotheticals, right? Yeah. And I thought, this guy has some courage. Like, he's, he's going on saying some... <laughs> Uh, pointed things that I honestly, I, there's ego in me at, at that time. And I thought he can't be right. Is he right? And the, the question of it really kind of caught me off guard. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. It was, it was like two, three weeks of me just incubating, watching your videos and thinking like, is he right? And for me, I, 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 I just couldn't take it anymore. Cause I thought to myself, uh, when I go all in, I'm all in. And mm -hmm. before I want, went in all in to start my IUL business, I thought, if there's remotely a chance what he says is true, I can't go along with it. Mm. Like, I have to find out for myself. And I'm not going to lie. There's a couple of times I went to your website, filled out my information, stopped, <laughs> didn't complete it. <laughs> went back in, filled it up. No, not yet. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I think in this industry, a lot of agents, you'll learn that timing is everything. You know, it's your yeah. journey. Timing is everything. And it just wasn't my time until it was. And I remember mm -hmm. the day I said, I'm doing this. I filled that that form out all the way. And I got an email and I, I did some research on it and I, I found out that you live in Phoenix. And I said, oh, this is fantastic. So, uh, you know, you called me and um, I said, is there any way you come out to my office? I'd love to meet you in person and let's hash it out. Like, yep. change my mind, basically. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I remember that call. Like, yeah. and being like, I remember talking to my wife that day being like, she's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going up to Scottsdale to, uh, to meet with this guy who's like an IUL guy who's like, and I'm like, I don't know what the conversation is going to be like, but I'm, you know, I'm like, you know me, I'm happy to go have these conversations. And like, if I can change one person's like perspective and like get one person to open their mind and like, whatever, uh, I'm in. And she's like, are you, th it's probably just a waste of your time. Really? Like, you know how these people are, they're not going to open their mind. And, uh, and, and I remember going up there to your office and sitting in your office and beautiful office in beautiful spot and just sitting there being like, I don't know how this is going to go, like how, how he's going to take it. But I mean, you, you, I, I mean, you asked some really pointed questions, you know, and, and like you were very uh, to the point about like what you, what you were looking for and uh, what the challenges were. And I remember, I remember expecting more of a fight, but like at the end of it, you were just like, crap. Okay, I guess. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Yeah, there's really no fight. And I think the fight is you, you think, you know, I think a lot of IUL agents think they're going to fight, but once they really know the truth, there's no fight. Like you have no teeth in the game. Mm. And if you think you have teeth in the game, it's because you just don't know the IUL. And so yeah. when you broke it down for me, and I thought, well, I can't continue to, to offer this product. And you, I mean, you did change my life because you changed the entire trajectory <laughs> of my business and yeah. uh, which I'm really thankful for because I think not only did you affect my life, you affect my agents and people that I'm going to be training from this day on. Um, and it's just something that I just never seen. And it, it's so, it's kind of scary at the same time, how you could truly wholeheartedly believe in something, but at the same time, be so blinded. And that, that honestly, I, I took a step back and I, I was really shocked and thinking, wow, that was an actual reality I thought was true. Mm. And I would have fought anybody. In fact, when he came down, I was ready to fight like, you know, verbally. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when he broke it down, I mean, you, you disarmed me. And after you disarmed me, there's really nothing to fight because the truth is the truth and there's nothing you can do about it. So, so, so you and I are very similar in that way mm -hmm. though, right? Like I remember, I remember, you know, I sold IULs for four and a half years before I had the realization that yeah. they weren't what I thought they were. Right. So we went through the same process it, yeah. just in different timeframes and whatever. Um, and we had a little bit of a different experience in, in getting to that place. 
but I remember going through that and, and how hard it was. And, um, you know, the, that, that emotional process, because I mean, human nature, the natural tendency from, from a survivalistic perspective is that, is that perspective is that confirmation bias. Right. And, um, you know, for me, I would say if I have one like strength, like real strength, it's that I don't have a huge confirmation bias drive. I'm always trying to challenge what I believe to be true, play devil's advocate and almost get myself to be wrong. You know what I mean? And, and kind of come at it from that perspective. So can you talk about that a little bit? Because I think that's a big thing. Cause like so many people are holding on and seeking this confirmation bias, you know, for what they believe for the IULs. And they're only focusing on the elements, um, that they can talk about, right? Like you said, they're, they're, they want to talk about the nice shiny paint job on the car. They don't want to open the hood and look at the engine and look at like, I, I know nothing about engines, but like the spark plugs and like the wiring and like all the things that make a car go, you know, like that, that, and that to me, that's everything here. You know, I could, I could get you a Lamborghini that's a kit car and pay 20 grand for it, or we can go buy a Lamborghini, you know what I mean? And like do it the right way. So like, how did you get to this place where, you were able to get beyond that because I think that's important. I, I, I think that's important as well. Um, I've always been known as being very open. I am mm -hmm. very open. Um, yeah. And you know, what's interesting, I was really caught off guard that I, I had that confirmation bias because usually in most things, when people, I, I don't follow the herd. I'm the type, I look at the herd, I'm like, okay, is there something that we're not seeing? And I'm always like, I don't really conform to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't realize how much I conformed to like IE well and selling it until I met you. I'm like, whoa, I, I, I wasn't even conscious of right. that. And so I, I think being open and uh, is so important. And I think a lot of us, we're not open. Like I could say things that would challenge you and you get upset, but it's like, you're just not open. But mm -hmm. what if I said was true? Then what? And so for me, and I think for some people, I'm going to be honest, some people in the industry, they don't care because they just want to make sure. money. Let's just be real, right? Sure. Um, and like for me, I, I want to help people. I generally put people first. I want to help people. And if yeah. there's a chance I hurt them, there's no way that I can't afford to be open. I have to be open. It's, it's a requirement. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I mean, I personally know agents where they, they don't have to be open because they just want to sell something and make some money. So, so I get it. But Mm -hmm. Being open is really, really important. And if you, you know, if you learn something like the IUL or whatever, there's a couple of questions that I would ask is who taught you, mm. first of all, and what is their intention? Like, do they make money off of you for selling it? Um, how well do they even know it? You know what I mean? And if you went to them and you challenged them, how would they treat you? Like, would they say, hey, you know what? I'm open to finding out. That's a great question. And if it's wrong, we should probably find out together. If that's not their response, they're like, oh, don't worry about it. Just keep on selling. You got a problem. And I think there's a lot of agencies and IMOs and companies out there. If you ask them anything about IUL or try to, you know, try to pry into it, you will get immediately mm -hmm. shut down. And if you don't get shut down, you keep on going. They will terminate you. They will ban you and they'll kick you out of the circle. And I, I just recently spoke with agents that we brought on uh, here with Life 180 that said the exact same thing. When they start, they watched your video yep. and they start asking their upline, hey, well, what about this? Upline did not answer any questions. In fact, they say, don't focus on that. Just focus on recruiting. And if you if you're in a team and your upline or your manager or whoever you're working with, your mentor has that kind of attitude, you better watch out. You probably better run or you better seek different uh, advice from somebody else outside of that team for sure. So there's a couple things you just said um, that I wanted to like kind of circle back on. So uh, yes, um, I, I I think one of the things that uh, really attracted me to wanting to have you on the team was your. Uh, desire to be nonconformist, if you will, right? right? Like that, because I think that's important. We always got to be stretching our boundaries and, and like thinking outside of the box. And I think one of the reasons you fell into um, conformity with IUL is because they build it as such a nonconformist culture, right? Yeah. And this nonconformist product. And like, it's the right. anti Wall Street, the anti government, the anti 401k, the ant, like yeah. it's all this stuff. And so they kind of position it as all these things. Uh -huh. when like they're full of half truths and like the whole, the whole ship that they're selling has just got mm -hmm. holes in it. Right. And so like, I think it's, it would, it's, I think a lot of people are naturally drawn to that and they think they're doing the right thing. Right. Like, and, 
And from that perspective, like I truly believe the problem is not the agents. And I think a lot of people misinterpret a lot of my content um, because I, you know, I do a lot of videos on like WFG, PHP, PFA, yeah. like all these companies, right? Like, and I, and I have no problem. Like, you know, you, you know me, I'm going to, I'm going to throw punches when I, when I think they need to be thrown <laughs> yeah. and it is what it is, um, you know, but, but when I, when I look at this and I, and I see what people are doing, I believe that most people get into this business and yeah, sure. There's always going to be the bad actors out there, right. right? Like, yeah, we can't avoid that. But I do believe most agents get into this wanting to serve people, wanting to help people, wanting to learn themselves, right? Like wanting to get into this, but then, but then they're only sold the shiny paint job on, on the shell of the car. Right. And they're not told how it works and they're not told how to do it all. And, and honestly, like this whole idea of like creating an IMO for life 180, it's been a lot of work, as you know. Um, it's it, it wasn't something that I was seeking to do. Honestly, finding you is making it infinitely easier because you know us working so closely together and you kind of taking the reins uh, for a lot of the agent training is, is super helpful. Um, you know, but it really has just become a mission that we've had to do because because of the fact that I've had so many agents reach out and say thank you. I didn't realize this and, and something didn't feel right. And then I saw your videos and then I realized exactly why it didn't feel right because everything I was feeling and thinking that I couldn't articulate because I didn't know enough to articulate it all of a sudden made sense. And so like they reached out and, and I just, there started to be so many of those that it was like, Oh, I got to do this. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like it, it, it just was what it was. We, it's, it felt like an obligation at that point in time. You spent, you said, you said a spot on That's That's how I feel. Um, you know, they, they say, I think in industry over 90% of life insurance don't make it basically. I, I don't know if it was yeah. the first year or whatever. Three percent don't make it through three years. And, and I, I don't think that has to be the truth. I think there is okay. just companies that have poor training, their intentions are wrong. They're not mm -hmm. putting people first or putting sales first. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that number has to be that high. I just, I can't even believe it's that high because right. if you have anybody that really wants to serve people and wants to win, how do you not help them win? Now, look, there are some people like you just can't help and they're, maybe it's just timing. It's, they're going to have a different journey, but mm -hmm. I mean, 93%, that's kind of crazy. And number. when I, when I looked at the number, and I look at these other companies that I've been a part of and I kind of see it, it totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of the, it, I mean, I'm going to be breaking down all the details on my channel, but like, if you look at companies like WFG, PHP, I could definitely speak from it because my mentor was um, um, close and ties with Rich Dolly, one of the, the top guys at WFG. So he mm -hmm. taught me the, he would call it inside baseball, the inner workings of the company that even their top guys didn't even know why they did mm -hmm. certain things because nobody asked mm -hmm. questions. And so if you look at that company and how the training is set up, it is specifically set up. It's like, it's like news these days, right? They program you for a certain outcome and they want to embed in you a certain belief. And I hate to say it, guys, because I know it. Every time they have training, every Tuesdays and Saturdays, the only purpose is to change your belief in the direction that they want you to believe, which is mm -hmm. IEMOs are the best thing since sliced bread, and we're against Wall Street, and this is the this is we're saving the world. And mm -hmm. you know, it's easy for somebody that's never had experience feel that rush and emotion. This totally because I think a lot of people lack purpose, and a lot of people lack purpose because well, what kind of purpose did you have at your job? So you come into this world of entrepreneurship, working for yourself and everybody has purpose, you're just going to get lost in the emotion and you just don't even question the thing that you're selling. And this is the programming. They got it down like a science. I mean, every single week they're pumping in new agents and pumping out uh, appointments uh, through their friends and family, selling a product they don't even know how it works. And it's just... It's just crazy. I mean, for me, I, I feel the same way. I feel obligated and I'm not trying to bash companies. Like right. you said, I just want to educate them on how yeah. it really works and they mm -hmm. can make their own decision. Hey, after I educate you how it really works, pull back the curtain, yeah. you still want to do it? Go ahead. I have nothing yeah. against that. But I think the problem is nobody pulls back the curtain and you don't mm -hmm. know what you don't know and until it's too late. And that's really the big problem.
Yeah, man, I I agree wholeheartedly, one thousand percent. So let let's talk about this, Corey Reedy. Um, little positive feedback there for you, Matt. So the um, let's talk about um, some of the models that these guys are working with, right? Because like when uh, here's what I'll say when I when I first started, um, I launched the IMO at Life One Eighty before Matt and I met anybody that's watching this. Just so you know, um, so it when he came to join. Um, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, all right, like, this is going to be, this is going to be awesome. Like I got a guy who can kind of be a general in the field and I can work with, and, you know, we can really truly impact lives and change and help people because at the end of the day, you know, I, I think one of the, one of the challenges that I saw in these other IMOs, the WFGs and PHPs of the world, you know, th there's a lot of what I would call moral hazards that kind of exist in those compensation plans. Right. And so if you don't know the business extremely well, it's really easy to not know kind of where those, you know, pitfalls are and where those challenges are. And so, you know, I kind of took a step back and I said, all right, knowing what I know about the industry, uh, knowing what I know about network marketing and compensation plans, because, you know, that's, my first mentor was one of the top all-time income earners with Amway. So I've got a lot of exposure to like that whole network marketing world and like done a lot of compensation plan design for big companies. And, you know, we've done a lot of stuff like that. So I understand that space. And like looking at it, I was just like, how could we create a model that sets people up for success, but, but also do it in a different way? Because I, I, I totally get the network marketing kind of like vibe. The financial industry is not a place for that. Right. Like it's because like as soon as you start dealing with people's money and their financial future and like you're you're taking that responsibility on, you can't mess around with like, hey, you're my buddy. Like, I want to just recruit you before I even know what I'm doing. You should come in and do the same thing. We should talk to all our friends about it and like do this thing that we don't even really fully understand yet. But just my upline tells me to just trust them and do what I'm going to do. And like, we'll make a lot of money. And like you can't handle this business that way and do it in full integrity. And that's like, listen, if you're selling skin cream, God bless you, have fun, good luck, you know, like whatever. But when we're talking about people's, you know, financial futures and their legacy and their families and all that stuff, gosh, like, man, it's, it's you know, you can't do that. And so um, the challenge is like a lot of times people are going into these organizations told to just keep your head down, don't ask questions, you're getting compensated at this rate, whatever. It, usually it's 30 to 40%, you know, yeah. when you're first starting off, which to me is just like an atrocity. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to meetings that are focused on recruiting first. You got to recruit two to three people before you can get your first raise. It's not about your, you see, and, and this is the thing for me, to me, this business, and this is why I created things here the way that we did and why we're going to continue, uh, continually evolve it is that your growth as an agent shouldn't be based on your ability to recruit people right. who also don't know what they're doing. It right. should be based on your proficiency, your ability to actually serve people, yeah. you know, and your proof that you're going to go out and execute and serve people in a, in a real way. Yeah. Right. Like right. How, why is, why uh, I, the fact that that seems so revolutionary in this business is mind numbing to me. <laughs> well, I think it's the intention behind it. Like one of the things when I came over here, um, I really, you know, studied you and your character and, and how Life 180 worked. And I, I was really impressed. I, 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 I said to myself, I can't believe I finally found a company where it's like, it's just about helping people and helping the agent, helping the client, like wholeheartedly. And there's a lot of companies that say that, but their actions are not congruent with that statement. And the agents miss it. And what I mean by that is this, like if somebody came to Life 180 and they say, hey, I want to recruit my friend, no problem. You can, uh -huh. you guys can learn together and that's no problem with that. Right. Uh -huh. It's, it's, I think it's the intention behind it. If you uh -huh. want to bring a friend on and you want him to learn alongside you and we can train you guys at the same time, no problem. I think the intention is right. But if you look at these other companies like WFG, PHP and any model, any model that you have to pay to join any model, uh -huh. the intention is different. The intention to recruit is not to train the agent the intention to recruit is to get a list of their family, fr listen, uh, fr friends and family, so they can actually go on appointments. And what what these agents don't understand is they go to these companies, they say, "Oh, we got leads." Yeah, the leads are your friends and family. 
And I hate to say it, if you create a list and you don't have that many connections, you're out the door. <laughs> they're, they're not working with you. And that's how their that's system is set up. And so if you say, hey, I got a buddy that's interested in getting in this industry. Can I bring him over? In that model, they're going to say, heck yeah. And then separate from you, sometimes they'll take your friend, create a, friends, uh, a list of friends and family, and they're going to go on appointments, but they call it training appointments, meaning the best way to learn is on the job training. So you're going to watch me close this business and that's how you're going to learn. Eventually you'll be off on your own. Well, what sure. they don't tell you is 10 families in, you just pretty much killed your whole market one. And then two, you sold your whole friends and family a product. You don't even know what it is. And, and I think it, that's the key. That's, that's the, key. the key, right? Because listen, I'm, I'm all about like mentorship and right. doing training in that way. And whatever um but the the red flag in all that always is just fall in line and do it the way that we say um and and that makes me want to kind of talk about um this and and that is the fact that when you when you look at most imos most imos focus on index universal life right most imos focus on index universal life for two reasons and two reasons alone one they have a higher compensation level at the top, right? So from the top down and make no mistake about it, the compensation structure goes all the way to the top. So the top, top, top contracts with the company to the carrier are higher with IUL than they are whole life. And a lot of people will fight back on that. But like when you compare target premium to base premium, overfunding to PUAs, like yeah. all these different things, um, yeah. you're, it, it, IUL pays more. That just, and that's not an argument, like that's not a debatable thing. Like it's, that's a fact. Anybody that wants to argue with me, that's just a fact. Yeah. So there's that. Then the other element of this is now these guys are going out and recruiting literally hundreds of thousands of IUL agents, yeah. right? Yeah. And the reason they focus on IUL is because IUL, uh, even though it's not real, it's easier to sell because when you look at an IUL on a, on an illustration and you just look at the spreadsheets and you look at the, the stuff, it's a very like, uh, it, it, it's a very linear sale. Right. And so now all these organizations can just create, um, like a sales script. Yep. It doesn't force the agent to really know. So, yep. and they tell you, don't ask questions. Yep. Just fall in line, do the script. It works, recruit your people, do this stuff. Mm -hmm but it doesn't focus on all the elements that matter. They can, I, listen, I've been on calls against some of the top WFG people in the world, right? Like literally. And, and even the top, top people didn't know the answer. I remember, I remember being on a call with this guy and, and it was a competitive situation. And he's one of the top Vietnamese agents in WFG in the whole country. Right. So one of my, one of my uh, teammates brought one of the guys that works with life 180 brought me on a call being like, I'm in this competitive situation. I need your help. And I was like, I'm there, let's go. Uh, and if you know me, if you, I get a chance to be on another call with an agent that sell an IUL across the table for me, I, that's my heaven. So, so, so I get on the call and the guy, when I, at any time I threw out like facts about IUL mm -hmm. and like how it actually works, yeah. he just kept going around my question and going back to his script. Mm -hmm. Even at the highest of high levels, he didn't know what he was doing. He just got really good at following mm -hmm. a sales presentation. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Like, and, and because IUL is easier to sell on a sales presentation oh, and sure. because of the fact that it doesn't force the agent to become more, to be yeah. more effective, to actually sell and serve people, mm -hmm. right? Selling should be through the process of serving. I always tell people I'm a really crappy salesperson. I'm really good at educating people. Right. I'm really passionate about what I do. And I believe emphatically in what we do. And that makes me sell more. Yeah. Right. So, you know, like what, do, what do you, what, what's your thought on all that? Like, well, the, the thing is a lot of these companies, what they do, um, the, the companies, the pay to pay companies, uh, pay to play companies where you got to pay to join, um, that primarily sell IUL. And what they basically do is, they push on you every week training that to, to measure how good you are is your ability to follow their system. And so that's just a congruent messaging. If you're going to be good, you got to follow the system. If you want to be the top millionaire, you got to follow the system. The difference between the top, top guys and the bottom is they follow the system. And so what's the system? Well, every company is a little bit different, but they have a cookie cutter presentation that you have to memorize. And these cookie cutter presentations, they focus on concepts that like it's like the best case scenario of an IOL. 
And so, of course, if you don't know anything better, these concepts sounds like who wouldn't want this, right? Because you're not asking questions because you're seeing yeah. all these people make money. And here's, a, here, here's what gets people. Everybody talks about um, how important family is marriage, all this stuff. And they do it on purpose to have you feel like they have high integrity. So you don't question John that goes to church and the family and five kids. And all he does is adore his kids. There's no way he's going out screwing people. So you don't question it. Everything's built in literally everything. All the details are built in and designed for you to feel a certain way. And so now you're doing a sales presentation, selling concepts across the table that person believes you because you're they're your friends and family. The concept sounds great if it actually yeah. worked, right? And so they're like, okay, that's a no-brainer. Let's do it. But then the agent doesn't even know what's going to happen. The, 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 the client doesn't know what's going to happen. So what I'm saying is their system, they really thought it through. Like they have it <laughs> down to a science. Man, yeah. do they have it. And I, I even have a book from one of the, the top agents in WFG. And if you read his books – you would be shocked on the, the amount of detail they actually put in place to make sure you are in a position to like go through and create a list and build a business and recruit everybody, you know, everybody that you meet. So, um, yeah, I mean, that you, you get what you, you get, but I think a lot of agents, and that's why I want to come out and help people because mm -hmm. if you like it, no problem. Once you know what it is, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's like you got a Lamborghini and I pop the hood and say, hey, look, it's a Honda. You want to still keep it? You want to keep it? No problem. But if you say, what the heck, it's a Honda, at least you should know, right? At least you should know, then you can make your own choice. Sure. And what I know for sure, most agents and those agencies, they don't know. And like you said, even the top guys, they can't even explain. Well, and that's the hard part. Like, so, so from that perspective though, you know, I don't want to throw too many stones at the individuals because like at the end of the day, I really think a lot of them still believe yeah. they are doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I would say that, um, they believe that not only do they believe they're doing the right thing, but you know, they, they probably feel a lot like you felt for a while, right. Where, yeah. um, where you kind of like conformed when you're not a conformist kind of individual, because like you fall into this, this belief of, of what you're doing, why you're doing it. And like you get there and then you hit this place where you start having success and you've had a lot of conversations right. and now it becomes harder. The more success, the longer you're in, the bigger yes. your team, the yes. more sales you've made. Yes. Now it's like, yes. if you were wrong, <laughs> it's almost like you want to put the blinders on. Like you have to be right. You they do. Yeah. Yeah. They you know do. what I mean? Yeah. And, and for me, that was the hardest part of my transition because I had a lot of success out of the gate selling IUL mm -hmm. and I had to have a lot of really, really hard conversations. Yeah. And you know, and, and that transition, uh, was really challenging. And, um, and so I think, I think that's the key is like to, to find, uh, to find your truth earlier, but that is going to put it on you, the agent to do your own due diligence, your own research, your own third party stuff, um, you know, and, and kind of go from there. I think what you said was important. <clears throat> um, just because you're, you're in that company and you're doing it doesn't mean you're a bad person. And in fact, if you're a new agent, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to assume that your upline is a bad person too. Now, if they know what they're doing and all the ins and outs and they intentionally are, are trying to get appointments through you and they know it's not a good, that's different. But there are some innocent bystanders or some agents that are probably high up that don't even know. They're like, crap. I mean, it took me eight, nine years. Yeah. I've guided agents and clients. It took me eight, nine years yeah. to figure this stuff out. Hey, I've been humble. It, yeah. You know, I'm not perfect. And Find me one person that's perfect on this planet Earth, and uh, there is, it doesn't exist. But yeah. what I can say is, I learned from my mistakes, and now I have a new approach, and just you know, ignited a fire within me because I see a huge opportunity to re-educate some people, yeah. um, not only with the company and the values, you know, with the company that they're at, but the products that they're selling, you know, i.e., uh, uh, IULs and stuff like that. But for me, is a huge opportunity. We can go out and help a lot of people. And when I came here and saw what you guys are doing, I, I remember, I don't know if you, you remember when I asked you this, I said, are you the only company that's training people on this stuff? <laughs> and you're like the only one I'm thinking like, this is a gold mine. And when I got, uh, when I started, when I joined you guys and I saw the training that we have in our, our, our community, I'm thinking like, this is worth millions right here. Like mm -hmm. forget a book. Like, you know, yeah. I know Nelson Nash, he, he wrote that book, but yeah, you offer way more value 
because you know some people learn differently i guess some sure. people learn from a book yeah but it's more general yeah. but you 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 have videos that you don't even put on youtube you have videos in the community that like really specifically train you and what i like about the culture is it's about training people putting them in the position where they're knowledgeable enough to sit with people not yeah. the other way around go sit with many people or we'll train you while you on your job we're talking about people's yeah. livelihood here okay like totally. you should know what you're talking about and that's one of the things I knew. I'm like, this is this is my home for sure. To be able to focus on helping people, developing people, the knowledge, and and help them, that, you know, take action and stuff like that. I, I've seen a lot of companies, and I re- I still can't even name a company that has that type of approach, which is awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and that 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 was not done by accident. We'll say it that <laughs> way, right? Like it, and and here, so like, here's what I want to I, I want to touch on because uh, I think it's important. Um, sure. You, you kind of talked about uh, a bit of this in a negative way. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to kind of flip it a little bit um, okay. because, you know, one of the things that a lot of these um, IMOs do with new agents is they bring them in. They try to, I call it an internal consumption model, yeah. right? They recruit you. They try to get you to, you know, get your list of families for every recruit that they get as a licensed agent, or even if you're in the licensing process, They try to get you to sit down with your family. That's how they get your list. Whether you fail or not, they get all your family's clients. Right. If you crash and burn, they're gone, like whatever. So that's horrible, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and and they do that. And so that's why I call it internal consumption. So I hate that. And and it it really bothers me. I think it's dangerous for people. I think it's dangerous for your reputation. I think it's dangerous for the industry as a whole, because I think there's going to be regulatory fallback on a lot of the bad business that's been done through that, Um, all that stuff. So I was really passionate about being like, hey, uh, you know, so so and so just come and join us. We're going to train you. And, and I'm, I'm, listen, I'll I'll self-admit, I'm really not good at training new people. Right. It's kind of like, and I don't want to like pat myself on the back too much here and like talk, but I'm just, it's not my skill. Like Michael Jordan, you ask him how to shoot a jump shot. He's going to say, well, you just shoot, like right. just shoot, just yeah. shoot. And you figure it out. Right. Like he doesn't. And, and it was like, when I used to, like, I was an Olympic level javelin thrower. It's like, I was really good at taking good javelin throwers and turning them into like elite javelin throwers. I could not teach a brand new beginner freshman in high school, how to throw a javelin. Right. That I never could. Like, I, I just wasn't good at it. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I learned that about myself. I'm not good at dealing with brand, brand new. Right. I'm good at taking somebody like you and making you amazing and getting right. you to like hit that next level. That's my skill set. That's my unique ability. Right. And so having you come on board, that's where it's like a game changer. Yeah. But the, the thing that I want to like really touch on, right. uh, because it was a struggle of mine, right. is the fact that I hated the fact that people would like be taken advantage of for their right. families and yeah. their lists. And they'd be like, no, just fall in line and do what we say and all this stuff. I hated that to the point that I was just like, don't do any of that. Like, just just learn and get proficient, invest in yourself, get to the place where you can actually add value into their life and, and all that. Um, I've come to the place now, talk about our own growth and evolution. Mm-hmm. I've grown a little bit because I've had things happen in life. Right. Uh, to me where I see like, all right, there is an element of this does take a long time to get to know the business inside and out. It does. Um, yeah. And timing, time is of the essence in a lot of situations. And and so the, the thing that I've kind of come to the realization on is like, there needs to be more urgency as far as meeting with people than I had before, because mm-hmm. like, I don't, I never worried about that because I'm not the person that ever had to worry about. Like, I've always been like, just like, let's go, you know, not everybody is like whatever, but I am. And, um, and, and so I think the key balance here, and I, and I'm going to hand it over to you and let you talk about this because I know we've talked about it personally before, but I think the key point here is not that you shouldn't go talk to your family and friends and all that immediately, but it's that it's that you should never give um, blind control and trust to anybody that's working with them, right? right? You should never give up control of your friendship relationships and your family relationships to an individual. You should always use those calls, not as a way to just like, like, like for instance, I'm just going to use me as an example. If you were a new agent, Matt, and I brought you on 
and and I were to have you uh, like make a list of your friends and family and business acquaintances and so on and so forth, the goal wouldn't be to have Matt give Chris his list so Chris can go uh, sell everybody and just have Matt sit there sitting on his hands, being nice and quiet and like right. just learning and just fall in line and do what I tell him to do. The goal of me going would be to have conversations with people and help walk Matt through a process so he could learn to do it and ask all the critical questions that he would have and, and understand that there are no bad questions. Like understand that that critical thinking nature is what we should have. Because yeah. the goal for me with Matt, if Matt's a new agent, is to get Matt to understand this, so, this stuff so deeply and so powerfully that he just can't shut his mouth about right. it. You know right. what I mean? Because I truly believe, and I heard this from Dean Graziosi, is like, we got to believe in what we do so much that we believe in our core that we're doing a disservice by not sharing it to all the people that we love and care about, you know? And so, so where is the balance for you on, on, all right, like, you know, we don't want to take advantage of, you know, and, and hit people too soon, right? You want to understand what you're doing, uh, you know, before you go and sell it to your family, for instance, your, your brother, your parents, your, right. you know, whatever, buying policies on yourself. Like you want to understand it better before you go and, and put the people you love into something you don't know. Um, and then like at the same time, uh, like where's, where's the pivot? Where, where's the tipping point where you know yeah. enough and when, when's the right time? I gotcha. I'm so glad that you actually brought that up. Cause if um, somebody from one of those agencies uh, pulled a snippet of the earlier version of this video without context, it would make, make it seem like I'm totally against friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad we, we got the context here because I wholeheartedly yeah. believe you should talk to your friends and family and it should be a requirement for you, like your values. Yeah. Now, what the difference is this, in those other companies, you don't have a choice. It is required. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, it's not your decision. If you don't talk to your friends and family and set up those training appointments, you're no longer in the circle and you're basically cast it out. They just don't call you. And so what that sounds like is this, you, if you, if you create a list and you don't call your friends and family, that first meeting, uh, you'll go to the training on Saturday or Tuesday and you'll notice a shift on how they treat you like, oh yeah, yeah. And that you're pretty much out of the circle at that point. And that's what agents don't know. The, the upper echelon, the, up, uh, the uplines, they only work with people if you create a list and you're willing to call and schedule appointments. If you do not do that, they no longer work with you, right? That's mm -hmm. one. And then two, some organizations, some agencies will actually copy that uh, friends and family list. So when you quit, they will call them with or without you. So I think it's more on the intention, their approach. Um, if, you, if they just recruited somebody, the goal is to be on an appointment with your friend or family within that same week. Like that's their system. If it's more than a week, then you're not good at running the system. And then wow. you get pressure from the upline, like you suck at running the system. So the, 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 the context is like how they're approaching friends and family is what I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should talk to your friends and family. In fact, I think most people, you know, they don't want to talk to your friends and family because their, their focus is more on being selfish. And when I, the reason I say that is you're more focused on your feelings of emotion of what if yeah. they say no and all that, that you, you're not actually, yeah, you're not actually thinking about other people. Like if you just yeah. focus on other people, you'll be amazed on the things that you have courage to do. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think your friends and family should, um, uh, you should sit with them because over the years, you know, I, I've been able to help a lot of families where if I didn't sit down with them, I mean, they, they probably would have been in bad situations. I even had agents that pass or agents, you know, fathers and parents pass away. And I'm the one that who wrote, uh, wrote the policy. Now, I know I came from an agency that was similar like those companies, but here's the difference. We ran it differently. The reason yeah. why my old mentor left WFG is because he didn't agree with those values and he created a company with similar system, but mm -hmm. we actually inserted value. So I know right. the difference. So it was a little bit different. And, um, you know, I think one of the things with Life 180, and the, really the balance is this, um, you know, we, we don't have a definite line. When's the right time, right? Um, if, if I think the key thing is, though, we're so open book about the product, how it works, we'll train you that yeah. 
it's you, kind of up to you for you to write, uh, ask the right questions and you to know it so you can feel comfortable. And even if you felt comfortable and you believe in the product finally, and you're uncomfortable uh, talking with them, we'll do it for you together. Mm -hmm. But the key is you're on your own time. And so I guess, you yeah. know, there's no definite black line after 30 days, you need to be talking to friends, family. It's like, right. well, how long is it going to take for you to just obtain enough information for, you know, the truth and you know how it works. It's all about and, your belief. And other companies don't, they don't do that. They don't give you enough time. That's actually part of the system. It's the speed of it. That's why they call it the seven speed filters or the nine speed filters. Every, yeah. they, every branch and, and team has a different, but it's called speed filters because the idea is you take a root uh, recruit and in a fast speed, get them through all their appointments before the agent has a chance to say, what did we just sell them? That's the whole idea of it. And that is really the big problem. So I have nothing against, just in case you try to cut a piece of the earlier video, I have nothing against friends and family. I think it's important uh, to show them what you're doing and helping them out. But it's just, you know, the intention behind it for sure. Yeah, man. I, I think that's the key, right? Like I, I mean, I talk about this in all the videos, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing is, is alignment of values and beliefs with what you're doing. Right. And it's yeah. like, I think one of the biggest mistakes that life insurance agents make, and and I could say this is probably 98% of the time of, of agents, is that we all come into this business. Um, and I think it's important to understand this. Like nobody that I've not met one person, not one, that says, hey, Chris, I've known I wanted to be a life insurance agent since I was a freshman in high school, man. Like I, I knew immediately... Actually, you know what? I might have met one person uh, who mm -hmm. said they were in high school and they knew because their dad died when they were in high school and right. he left them nothing. And that was like a driving force in their life. And that was clarity. But that's obviously a really unique situation. Um, but most people don't don't like nobody is try like I can tell you, I didn't think I was going to be a life insurance expert, like and dedicate my life to this, you right. know, like to the <laughs> that I do. I, I never would have guessed. You know, but what I, what happened to me is a series of events that led me down a path that got me to open my eyes to this thing that I had never contemplated. And then through that process, I had this kind of emotional awakening and this process of self-discovery, this process of discovery about, you know, this concept and this product and these processes and like really understanding, um, you know, all the things that matter in my life about my core values, my beliefs, my goals, my objectives. And then ultimately you were reverse engineer that and you realize like, holy cow, I had this emotional kind of uh, awakening that like, wow, this is so powerful, right? Like, and so that's, I think a lot of people do that and some people happen faster than others, but the <laughs> problem then comes, we all have this emotional discovery, this emotional like epiphany, so to speak, this, uh, this epiphany moment where we're like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing. Like I need this in my life. Everybody needs this in their life. If everybody knew what I know, like the world would be a better place. So I need to get my license and I need to go share this with people and I need to do all this stuff. And so then they, they did this and they don't realize that they did not make the decision and come to the realization that they love this so much because of an illustration showing mm -hmm. them X percent internal rate of return, whole life, you know, like blah, 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 cash value, this, that. That, I mean, that was like a small part. Those numbers on that sheet was what made you like maybe confirm some of what you believed, right? right? But make no mistake about it. You make your decisions emotionally. You validate those decisions with logic. I say that all the time. And, and, and the challenge is that's the process you went through for yourself. But then we get into the business and we just try to sell everybody the logic. And if you do that, and this is the process that most of these companies have, they're just like, Look at the system, look at the sales process, follow it along, push people through it. That's all logic driven. Some emotional components to it yeah. because they're touching on your like dystopianism and like, you know, like nonconformity and like the, you know, they're, that's very emotional, emotional play for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, like I, I think, you know, what it comes down to is we need to, you know, any agent getting into this business, your first month in the business before you learn about all the illustrations, you, yes, you should learn about how the products work, period. But you should learn about how they work so you can communicate them without an illustration. That's first and foremost, right? right. And secondly, 
your first month, you should be really getting clear about your own story on why you fell in love with this, why you joined the business, why you are passionate about sharing this with people. And that has nothing to do with the technicals of the illustration yeah. or whatever. Right. And if you do that, you're going to connect with more people and you're going to, you're going to, you're, you're, yeah, you're going to connect with more people and you're going to make greater impact, you know? And it's like, to me, that's what this is all about. For sure. A lot of these companies, they got that in a template on their training. They, it, they get your emotion up and then they back it up with their own logic. And that is the cookie color every Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, they get your motion up mm -hmm. and then they back it up with their logic. And that, mm -hmm. that works. I mean, they totally, I've seen people totally. get completely brainwashed, including myself. I mean, um, and that's really the big problem. Once you're in it, you just don't realize what's going on. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people, you and I, we're going to change our lives and we're going to help and it's going to be fun. And we're going to look back and say, dang, that's crazy. Like we re really made an impact over these last years. Uh, it's going to be sure. fun doing it for sure. It is, man. It's uh, it's really good stuff. So what what I'm looking to do, um, and so Gabriel uh, just just asked us to do a little role play. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to do a full role play right now because we we're gonna we only got about five minutes left, and I don't want to like cut it short. But I tell you what, Gabriel, um, we will do it again, um, oh, sure. and because because Matt and I are going to be going live uh, as often as possible. We're going to shoot for once a week. Um, with my travel schedule, his travel schedule, like there may be some weeks we miss, but the goal is going to be to uh, do this as often as possible. Um, Gabriel, I see you're on LinkedIn, uh, but next time we'll do it. Uh, try to follow uh, the Life 180 channel on YouTube because um, we don't always hit LinkedIn. Sometimes it's just on YouTube. So go check us out there. Um, but here, here's what I'll say is, um, you know, I think uh, one of the one of the reasons I created. Hold on here. What do I have? I have this is. Uh, this is the like the I printed it out because we've got a bunch of these in print right now. But this is this is something that I created for life insurance agents that, you know, all um, Life 180 agents now are going through and utilizing. And it's all about how to structure your day in a way that you can serve people and get your mind right and develop yourself and do all these things. And, you know, it starts with morning mindset. It goes through a whole activity planner. It's 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 blending in the importance of how we show up in the world for ourselves because you know we got we got to develop and grow ourselves to the point like we are our best asset right like we got to develop that asset to be able to serve more people money i think the thing i love about this business the most is the fact that money follows value right like period so the more value you're able to add to the marketplace you know the more you know money is just the scorecard on the end on, on the other side if you look at it that way you know, being really intentional about how you're showing up in people's lives, I think, um, you know, the impact you can make is, you know, just uh, is what this is all about. And I don't know another indus industry, um, you know, that 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 even comes close yeah. to matching what we can do, because you're not just helping people right now. We help people get out of debt. We help people invest for cash flow so they can reach financial freedom faster. We help them be more stable and secure in their retirement. We help them, you know, pass on from a legacy perspective to the next generation. You know, I, and I guess I'll, I'll I, I just did a video on this yesterday um, and it was something that that like really hit me. I actually let me pull it up real quick here. I got uh, Tony Robbins here. So so I was talking to a guy uh, yesterday. His name is Michael Isom. Um, he wrote a book called What We're Worth, talking about human life value. Right. And so in human life value, um, he's talking about the fact that like we need to stop thinking about our value as far as a balance sheet and as far as money goes and start thinking about it more relationally yeah. and, and our impact in the world. Yeah. And, and, and he was talking about four of the six of of uh, of how does he say it? Um, human needs, you know, uh, that that Tony Robbins talks about. And, and, you know, back in the day, my wife and I did a bunch of Tony Robbins stuff. Yeah, I've done a bunch of Tony Robbins programs through the years, right? And Tony Robbins talks about the six human needs. Now, Michael Eisen talks about four of the six, and that's kind of his focus. But I went through this, and I was like, wow, I think, and it really hit me yesterday. And like last night, yesterday afternoon, I was just like, and everybody, this video is coming out on the YouTube channel, I think, next week. It'll be out. But I talked about the, the six human needs. So think about this. Number one is certainty, right? Number two is 
uncertainty. Number three is significance. Number four is love. Number five is growth and expansion. And number six is contribution. So, so when I talk about, is your money in alignment with your values and beliefs? Is what you do for your career, because make no mistake about it, whatever you do for work and how you build yourself and, and add value to the world is directly correlated to your money, right? And so, so is all that like connected and correlated? And so when we think about uh, certainty and, and like, I don't know a financial product that provides more certainty than a whole life insurance plan yeah. with uncertainty, I think it provides the opportunity for you to be on a path of growth, right? Like of, of change. And I know that's one of them too is, is uh, growth and expansion. But I think the uncertainty comes from like when we're building our financial foundation, I talk about financial structure all the time. And when we talk about our business, it, when, anytime you step into being a life insurance agent, you're, it's full of uncertainty, right? Like you're, like you're, you're forced to like, just be in that level of uncomfort, right? Like, and, and, you know, stretch yourself. And I think that's really, really powerful. And I think having your uh, whole life policy is a foundational asset in your life allows for an element of uncertainty that's also very healthy, right? Because it opens the world of possibilities up because you've got this core foundation built that's super solid and certain. So it allows you to take risks in other areas that allow a healthy uncertainty to exist that we all need to be fulfilled, right? Yeah. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's but significance, good. significance. Like I have a huge significance drive, right? Like I want to impact people. I want to impact mm -hmm. lives and agents and like, clients and all this stuff. So like, for me, there's nothing that makes me feel better than getting off a phone call with somebody knowing that I impacted their life. So that, that like significance love, I mean, is there any better? I mean, I always say life insurance is not a need product. It's a want right. product, character right. product, the love product. I don't buy life insurance because I need it. I buy it because my wife and kids need yes. it and I love them. Yes. Right. Like that's growth and expansion. Like, being an entrepreneur, getting into this business, yeah. like you're going to be forced to grow. You're going to be forced to expand. And I think, yeah. um, you know, it's why I call cash flow hacking, right? Mm -hmm. Like when, when, by having a whole life policy and leveraging it, you're going to be focusing on growth and expanding mm -hmm. and reaching goals that are like outside of the realm of normalcy and trying to do something special and unique. And like, to me, that's amazing. And then contribution, like, is there any better way that, you know, on a guaranteed basis, you're going to leave a better contribution. You're going to leave the world better than what you inherited than right. having this plan that's there for you. So those are the six human needs from Tony Robbins. That's crazy. Like, think about that. Yeah, it's like, like spot on what we do. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And wow. so like, I hadn't thought about that in a long time, you know, I mean, years, years. And, uh, I had to go through like up here. I don't know if you could see him on my board right here, but like, uh, I have, or on my, um, here, hold on, I, if I expand. Yeah, so like right there, I all up here, I've got all my journals. Those are like a decade's worth of journals on that shelf. And, um, and I keep them all. And, and I went through them and I found my notebook. It was from 2014 wow. when I was writing about that. And that was ironically the year that I started Life 180. No kidding. And um, yeah, man, it was, it was just fascinating. So I love that. And I would say anybody that's in this business, stop thinking so much about the technicals at first. The technicals matter. And I think it's probably ironic that a lot of people are hearing me say that because I'm like probably one of the most <laughs> technical people on YouTube as far as this stuff goes. Um, but the technicals only matter once you understand why you're doing what you're doing. Because you could be as technically sound, you could be the most sound engineer with this stuff in the world. Um, but if you can't connect with people emotionally, you know, you're not going to be able to move people. You're not going to get them to understand why it's important to them. Um, because if you don't understand why, and if you can't connect with that, if you, if you can't relate to that, right. um, you're not going to be able to communicate to people why the math makes so much sense or why the math matters. You know, too many people start with the math. You know, I could try to tell Matt the math all day long, but if I don't know Matt and Matt doesn't know my perspective where I'm coming from, or if I don't have like that credibility and authority to like go there with him. He's just going to shut down and shut off and put up a wall before I even have a chance to impact his life. And if my goal is to dramatically impact Matt's life, then I have a responsibility to connect with Matt first. Yeah. And really I can't serve Matt unless I know who Matt is, unless I really truly know Matt's goals for his future, his objectives, like, what he really cares about, what his values are, what his beliefs are. Cause I promise you, they're not identical to mine. Right. Right. And that's what we got to get good at. And I think when people go, Chris, 
how are you so good at this? It's like, I just care about people, yeah. you know, like, that's it. Like, that's it. Just, yes, I've taken, you know, over a decade to master the stuff right. and I've gotten better and better and better. And don't get me wrong. That does help. Right. Like, cause uh, you know, uh, Brennan Burchard talks about the competence, confidence loop, right? Mm -hmm. The more competent you become, the more confident you become. And the more confident you become, the more you can expand your level of competency and you can go to the next level. And then you just keep repeating that process. And so, yeah, you're, you know, you, you, you expand from that perspective. And that's certainly been the case for my, for my career or my evolution personally. But at the same time, it, like I had plenty of success before I was now, I watched some of my old content from like 2015, 20, and it's like cringy to me, you know, like <laughs> it's hard for me to watch. Um, not just like how I was speaking and how like I felt awkwardly uncomfortable and I could see it on myself and like mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, but some of the things I was saying, you know, it's like, whoa, I've learned a lot since that time. Mm -hmm. Right. And I promise you, I'm going to look back at what I'm talking about now from, yeah. you know, 10 years from now and I'll watch a video in 2033, you know, back at this day. And I'll be like, whoa, the world's changed a bit, you know, like, and I'm sure, but that's just the way it goes. And, and, you know, the thing I think uh, that doesn't change are the principles, right? Yeah. And the principles are these human needs. And yeah. when people ask me, why do I love whole life insurance is because whole life insurance provides you to meet all those needs. I right. well does not. Right. Does not. That's right? such, they have more uncertainty. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's crazy. And so, so yeah, man. So, uh, all right. You want to add anything before we, before we bounce? No, I mean, I'm just really excited. And I think um, as we start growing the channel and, and do this every week, we'll be able to impact a lot of agents lives. And, yep. you know, it's just going to be really exciting. And, you know, what you said is if you ever look back, you know, a few years back a video or pictures or anything like that, and you don't see a change, you should be scared. You should not recognize that person yeah. in the past. That, totally. that means you're growing. Um, but if you relate to that person, then, you, you know, you haven't grown. So that's pretty awesome that you look back and say, who is that guy? <laughs> it shows that you've grown over the years. And I, I'm sure, you know, in the future, we'll look back and we'll say, man, we were on the right track and look at us now. This is this is an amazing, um, you know, journey that uh, we'll be able to record and um, be able to mm -hmm. take part in. And it'll be really exciting. Love it. That's awesome. Well, thanks for being here. And uh, guys, anybody, anybody who is watching this um, that is interested in, connecting um you know we are recruiting the right agents to to help I, I hate that word recruiting you know there's an opportunity for the right people um to join and when i say that i mean it we don't take just anybody it's really your head and your heart got to be in the right place um but i will say uh, matt is an amazing coach um you know our team the resources what we're doing together um it's not going to be as fancy as your, you know, fancy presentations from some of these other companies and like whatever, um, you know, but, but I, I will promise you, you will get more out of it. You will grow. Um, and if, if, if focusing on your growth so you can add more value into other people's lives is what's important to you, um, then I would encourage you to reach out and uh, you can connect. You'd have a conversation with Matt directly. Um, and then based on that, I would say uh, you can kind of take it from take it from there and uh you know whatever and if you are somebody who's looking at getting a policy and you want to work with a team of agents or work with an agent from a team from a company that truly understands that the most important thing here is to to get to know you and understand your values your beliefs and help you align your money with those things um, you know there's also a link down below you can set up a, a a free clarity call to to really understand this stuff on a deeper level and that's it. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks so much, Matt. This is awesome. I can't thanks wait to do this on, on more of a regular with you. And uh, yeah. that's it. All right, guys. Have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.